Welcome to Click AI Radio, where you'll learn the secrets to transforming your small to medium business. Grant has been helping businesses transform using technology for over 30 years. Advanced technologies like artificial intelligence have been available only to large companies and advanced technical teams. Grant will discuss how you can use to leverage AI and other technologies to grow your small to medium business. As a gift, Grant is offering his ebook, AI for Sales Growth, at clickairadio.com. Now, here's your host and biz tech geek, Grant Larson. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Grant. Thank you for joining another episode of Click AI Radio. All right, so been thinking again still, this is really part two of AI combating COVID. When you when you think about all of the all of the carnage, if you will, in terms of the impact to businesses, definitely the impact to human life has been horrific, but also the impact to the businesses as well and all the people's lives affected by that. You start asking the question, at least I have, I've been thinking, what can AI do to help small businesses with so many business failures taking place due to COVID-19. Uh, here, here we are in uh, the 1st of September and uh, we've got uh, lots of uh, credit potential downstream problems coming to us. There are plenty of stats around. We're gonna take a look at some of those that quantify the number of businesses that have been dropping, that have been falling by the wayside. Uh, understanding these stats, I believe is useful but it, it also leaves me to ask, therefore what? Therefore, what can AI do? What can I do? What can I do with AI as a business owner to mount a massive plan to rebuild and to pursue the business vision that was once yours? What are the things that we could do? So I don't want to just focus on here's all of the negative things happening. It's important for us to understand what's happening, but we also want to pivot forward and look to the future and say, therefore, what can I do to regrow and regroup from this? So first part, let's take a look at some of the stats going on. First one comes from Bloomberg. This is a report that came out. Uh, it was around the end of July, so it's about a month old. Uh, and in it, it indicated uh, they actually were referencing Yelp. Uh, and uh, with Yelp, they had shown that, that there was more than 80,000 companies that had per permanently shut down. Now, that was during the period of March 1st to July 25th. And of those, 60,000 were local businesses, meaning they had fewer than five locations. About 800 of the small businesses filed for Chapter 11. Interestingly, there's a fair number that did not file for Chapter 11. That's that's another another conversation. In any event, um, that uh, that amount right there is up about 30% or more from last year during the same period of time. So that's a big number. That's a big shift. Let's look at another stat here. It says you know while the businesses. Um, you know, these small businesses are having these challenges. The firms with fewer than 500 employees end up accounting for about 45% of the U.S. economic activity. That's quite a bit when you think about it. Almost half of all American workers come through these small to medium businesses. And here's another stat also from Bloomberg. It said, hey, in June of 2020, there was a survey that showed that 31% of owners reported lower sales in the past three months, while 7% reported higher sales a year earlier. All right, you kind of expected that. All right, in the same survey though, only 13% of business owners said it was a good time to expand. All right, that's a dip from 24% a year earlier. All right, so fewer are thinking, uh, hey, I'm thinking bullish about business right now. Uh, so that's not that's not too surprising there's some interesting stats in terms of the the businesses that have had impact you know in the largest impact no surprise here the restaurant sector took the biggest hit right there retail and shopping was the next largest uh, beauty and then automotive and then uh, down into event planning in that order uh, in terms of order of, uh, of impact or level of impact I should say all right that was from Bloomberg okay so that's one view of the impact to the small businesses. I'm gonna jump over here. There's another report from the Proceedings of the Natural Academy 
of sciences. And they just quickly, they pointed out about 50% of small businesses have one to two months of cash available. Um, there were some other stats too. It came down to, it was a, around 15% or so had three to six months of cash available. So cash is king and uh, boy, if there's no cash coming in and that's all we've got in terms of our runway, that creates obviously a massive problem. So that's another issue. Of course, the question that leads me to think is, is there cash in the business that we're not getting access to? And I, I actually believe there is. I believe that AI, from my experience, we can use it to help us discover cash that's available. I'll talk about that in a bit. Here's, uh, here's the third area, a third report from CNBC um, that came out in at the end of June. It's talking about um, the amount of help that uh, small business owners had gained, the, the payment protection pro, or excuse me, the paycheck protection program and the economic injury disaster loan program. All right, those aren't easy to say, not easy to, to roll out. Anyway, they, um, they gave out nearly 630 billion in funding uh, and about one fourth of the small businesses that received that funding are already considered or considering closing their doors. And of course, the question that comes up is, gee, how do I pay back, right? And what's the implications, right? Will there be forgiveness if I do close my doors? That's a whole other topic as well. I wanna shift the thinking. So that's a dark picture, right? Uh, but I believe that there's a bright future ahead of us as a people. And with that, I wanna talk about some techniques where we see AI being used to combat COVID itself, and then we'll shift to another segment as well. But just briefly, in this segment, AI combating COVID, this particularly comes uh, from a report focusing on Asia, all right? And so what are different co countries in Asia doing? So there's mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea in this report. Um, it, in this report, it pointed out the following places where they are gathering data and that data is being used then for AI purposes. So I'll break this in two pieces. First, where are they collecting the information or the data? All right. So between those different countries, they're collecting it from places such as transportation systems, immigration and customs databases, obviously the COVID-19 databases, so the healthcare data. So multiple countries are using that data. Mobile data, mobile technology, right? Social media, credit card transactions, closed circuit television. So, you know, security cameras, um, GPS on the car, and then wearable tracking devices. All right, so what was that? That was like eight or nine different locations. And you start thinking, wait, what's the connection between that data and COVID and, and, and something to help me address COVID related scenarios. So I'll just call out a couple of these. So one of them is an AI based tool that facilitates targeting lockdown and reopening, right? So in other words, it monitors where a person should be, right? And of course, there's different uh, cultures and, and government policies. I'm not here to comment on those, but in any event, so using some of those trackable device data or mobile data, et cetera, if you're classified as, hey, you know, you've got uh, COVID, then uh, you are asked to stay within certain locations. And there's some AI helping to monitor that. There's other uh, AI based tools in these countries being used to enable quick diagnosis and classification of patients. Right. And we've seen some things yeah, here in the U.S. Uh, some organizations doing some things like that. I'll mention one here in just a moment. And so that's a, a critical way and a necessary way to use uh, AI. Uh, all in all, there's some strict home quarantines for those that have COVID in those countries. And as a result, use of this data across all these different uh, data sources that I had mentioned are being applied. All right. So that's AI combating COVID in Asia, ca capturing a two parts, sort of a, a social, cultural uh, use of AI. Hey, stay where you should. <laughs> and then there's, there's the approach that says, hey, um, we're gonna actually going to try to diagnose, uh, uh, diagnose you better with it. All right, let's talk about here in the U.S. So 
NIH launched a medical imaging technology using AI to fight COVID. This came out in a healthanalytics.com report. So the NIH uh, rolled this out not too long ago. Here comes a big acronym, M-I-D-R-C. So that's Medical Imaging and Data Resource Center. And what they're doing is they're utilizing AI, medical imaging, to of course look for those assessment opportunities. And the earlier that they can assess it, then, then the better, of course, they have the opportunity to help the patient with that. So they're gathering large repositories of COVID-19 chest images and the idea there, of course, is it allows the researchers to ask critical questions and then ultimately to develop what the appropriate next steps are for the people. So that's a cool way to use AI, obviously, to, to help people's lives. So the question is, therefore, what, right? So if you're a small to medium business owner, you're an entrepreneur, and you're trying to make it through this tenuous time where there's lots of companies that have been dramatically impacted negatively and lots of people's lives who have gotten sick with this. Therefore, what does this mean to your business? So as a business owner, we need to at times think as a researcher, right? We need to look for ways to evaluate your business data. How will you evaluate your business data? So just as those COVID researchers are certainly evaluating tissue data and asking critical questions, what business data will you evaluate? What questions do you have about your business? Now, what this means to your business is that you should run some AI predictive analysis on your business information. In other words, turn your data upside down, inside out. All right, look for the successful patterns that built your business. Many of them you know cognitively or empirically. In other cases, you won't know them, right? And we, we want AI to be able to highlight those and make you aware of those. And just as it's important to understand what the positive patterns have been, also look for patterns that created negative growth, right? And the sooner you can discover them, stop doing them, right? And so AI, there are some that you already know, you don't need AI to tell you, but there are others where there are times where AI points out interesting patterns or behaviors, and you need to be apprised of those and stop bleeding cash um, and that happens. So if you want to learn how to do this, subscribe to, to the channel, uh, reach out to me. We'll have a conversation and we can help you get started with this. Uh, don't forget the purpose, the mission, and the vision for why you started your business. Hey, thanks for joining. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you for joining Grant on Click AI Radio. Don't forget to subscribe and leave feedback. And remember to download your free ebook. Visit clickairadio.com now.